Lise, and you know it. A further point to argue in favour of Dante's belief in resurrection concerns the two rivers that he meets at the end of Purgatory, the Lise and the Unoe. The context is one of the most strange and has always aroused perplexity in the critics. Page 136. The earthly paradise in the Dantean fantasy is located at the peak of the Purgatorial Mount, and characterised as the place where Adam lived and a tree of the knowledge of good and evil was situated. But as regards the rivers that flow there, Dante deviates from the biblical tradition. In the biblical earthly paradise, there are four rivers that rise from one source. In Dante's version, the rivers also rise from one source, but there are only two. When Dante gets to the place from where they stream out, he will say, I seemed to see Euphrates and Tigris issuing from one same spring. The Euphrates and the Tigris are not only the names of the rivers in Mesopotamia, but also two of the four rivers in the biblical earthly paradise. Why hasn't he used these names for his rivers? No, although he evokes them, Almost underlining the fact, he preferred to use different names. Let's look at the context. Walking through the divine thick and living forest of earthly paradise, Dante arrives at a river, the Lethe, beyond which appears a woman, Matilda, who explains to him the origin and character of the two rivers. The water that you see issues from a pure and changeless fountain which by the will of God regains as much as, on two sides, is pours and it divides. On this side it descends with power to end one's memory of sin, and on the other it can restore recall of each good deed. To one side it is Lethe, on the other Unoe, Purgatory 28, 121-131. The Lethe is a river from the classical tradition, pagan, also present in the Aeneid, from which Dante not only gets the name but also all of the symbolic poignancy. Also, in the comedy, the Lethe is a river of oblivion. Unoe, instead, is a name coined by Dante using two Greek words, you, good, and new, mind. Literally, good, page 137, mind. That is to say, as Matilda explains, memory of the good. The commentators asked themselves where Dante has got this idea from, and cite is a door of Seville, who speaks of two springs in Boeotia, one of forgetfulness and one of memory, and they add that the information goes back to Pliny. These two founts are part of the Orphic tradition, and are called Lethe and Menosony, and their function is precisely that of forgetting and remembering. Menosony is also the name of a primitive Greek deity and was the personification of memory. She had nine daughters by Zeus, the Muses. I don't know if Dante knew this name, but it would be quite strange if he invented a river with the same characteristics, and even stranger to insert them in the earthly paradise, creating a hybrid of paganism and Christianity which doesn't seem to correspond to either one or the other tradition. It will also be true that, as Kiyavaki writes, only if one were to forget the bad can one fully enjoy the good. But of this need to forget the bad, there is no trace in Catholic theology. In the Greek tradition, drinking the waters of Lethe and Menosene, the waters of forgetting and remembering, had a definite meaning, linked to belief in reincarnation. Whoever drank the water of Lethe was destined to reincarnate. Plato also talks about it on the last page of the Republic. And by way of this, one would forget previous lives and celestial origin. The water of Menosony brings instead the memory of one's own divine origin and freedom from the cycle of rebirth. Dante will drink water from both rivers, but at different times. The choice of these moments, above all where the second river, Unoe Menesony, that renders one pure and disposed to climb up to the stars, shows that he knew the ancient significance of the two mythological rivers, that is to say, their relationship to the doctrine of reincarnation. 
I will return to this subject in the chapter dedicated to the consolamentum.